hey, uh, this, this probably looks very similar to the one I just did. I'm not moving from the spot as I do the next one because Mr. Producer is leaving town. He's heading off across the water again uh, to um, do some video work over in, I think, Ireland this time. So I have to have my work done ahead of time. So you're getting me twice in one night, but uh, you wouldn't know that if I didn't tell you, I guess, apart from certain looks and appearances here. Um, so um, I, this is from Animation MS. Again, I found myself looking back at some old videos, and some of these are three months old. My apologies to everybody who's been commenting. I hope it didn't discourage you from keeping on commenting. If I haven't answered one that you put in there and you want it answered, uh, drag it up and send it to me again. Even email it to me. And I'm because I really like to uh, get into the commentaries you guys have or the discussions, the, the questions, well, however you want to frame it. Um, uh, so I hate leaving, having these things falling away, falling behind. This is Animation MS. I forget what the MS was. Master something or other, maybe. I don't know. Uh, it had a nice name, but uh, I usually shorten those. Um, so Animation MS says, I was wondering if you could talk about angles. Even by comparing them to a straight, uh, I can't hold that relationship. I assume you mean by straight, a vertical. Uh, I can't hold that relationship in my mind's eye so that I can draw it. So I can draw it. It even seems an impossible task to me. How did you learn to eyeball angles and get them always correct? That's a that's a really really f f fun question at the very end. Uh, that we have we have so much fear created in this by the idea that we have to get them correct. Remember that. Uh, well, as I was saying, I think a couple of weeks ago that we, I was oh wasn't it? Maybe I didn't talk to you guys about it. I was I was visiting a. Um, uh, with my wife, I, I was at a, uh, a, a, what do they call it, bookstock in Woodstock, Vermont. And they were having a number of book events there. One of them was uh, under a tent and with, the, uh, with a couple writers being interviewed, writers who are teachers as well as uh, publishers. And uh, so they had some fascinating information. But one of them said, one of them said, uh, uh, you have, people, students who are writing novels, they, they, spent, they, they just go on, everybody, people just go on and on and on writing their novel and never get it done. He says, he says your job first is just to write your novel. And, and then now that it's done, you can look at it and see what you got. Now that is the whole summary of what I'm talking about here. You have to put out your angle idea and then you have to debrief. But your angle, this is the key here, is that the angle has to be based on something. It has to be based, in our case, on a concept. Now you, in writing that novel, would have had a concept, right? You would have had an idea for this book. And you would have then written the whole thing up, and then you would have looked at it to see how you did, or whether it's even a book you'd want to read, and all that sort of stuff, right? Well, in our case, we're gonna we're gonna have an idea of the angle to vertical, right? And then we're going to say, and I'm gonna talk about these relationships right through with some pictures, but then we would say, um, uh, we, and, then, and then we'd say, all right, now looking looking sort of at the side of your page, if you learned, if you have, a, if you can conceptualize, some people use the clock thing, the o clock, you know, here's twelve. And there's whatever o'clock, from your point of view, that would be 11 o'clock, and there's 10 o'clock, and there's 9 o'clock. You know, you can talk about all angles to vertical in many different ways. I just do it by feeling, but there's nothing wrong with that. I like putting imagination into the... As, and by the way, this is a very good naming moment. <laughs> You're talking about angles. Yes, that's one of our named things, right? So, but your job is to get the relationship of two angles. One is a given. And that's always the case, where if you know what your darkest dark is and your lightest light, then you can actually say what value, you can figure out where any other value lands, right, in that relationship. Uh, you can conceive of it, but it's based on a given, right? So if you're setting up the, a figure and you, do the, you say the top will be here as part of the head, there'll be a piece of the foot, and it's going to be this far away, and I'm never going to move those. That, those become givens, and you can base your concepts on givens. So that's a good thing to know. In the case of the uh, angle, though, it's just vertical. Vertical is the most uh, impressive given that's in front of you all the time, the corners of your room. The, you know, if you're in a house that was built by architects or built by, uh, um, by good construction guys, they will have made, they will have plumbed your, uh, your, uh, your posts, you know, all the corners of your house, your doors will be vertical. So you have verticals and you have your painting. And when you set up your painting, set it up so this side of your painting is vertical. And, um, and by the way, I say the side, uh, I recommend that you keep the side um, just because you need a vertical. Keep the one nearest whatever you're looking at uh, plumb. Uh, 
you can think about why that would be. I'm not going to go into that now. But so, but this th then uh, AMS says I can't hold that relationship in my mind's eye, so I can draw it. Um, so that idea of holding it in your mind's eye, uh, taking a photograph of it, whatever, getting a concept is kind of a funny thing because it's more felt than seen. So you might want to think about that as one factor here, right? But so you're getting a sense of it in your mind's eye. Then what you're going to do is go to the canvas. You already know what vertical is there, and you're going to try to articulate that to produce the same sensation. Okay? And then, and this is everything I'm trying to tell you today is these two things. I'll just talk about it in smaller ways. Then everything after that is uh, reacting. Is it the same? When you look at these, this, this set of angles, is it doing the same thing to your eye in your painting as it's doing in nature? Okay? That's the, that's the feedback. It's called debriefing, and you have to take the time to see if you achieved it. Most people live in sort of hope. They get an idea of it, they think, then they go out and do it, and then they go do something else. No, you've got to come back and review to make sure that it's maintaining the, the unity of the big impression in terms of angles, okay? And, of course, the, the, that it corresponds in, in, in a sense of what it's doing in relation to the whole, um, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. You're always watching the whole, and that's going to that's 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 a, that's the first grand concept you have. Now you can't own the whole. You can only get a sense of it, right? I'm talking about it coloristically as a whole, without thinking about parts. But even so, the coloricity of a picture, the chromaticity of a picture, the values, the general tonality of a picture, the grand gesture, the main line of a picture, those things you can sort of separate. But it's like the gesture of a figure. You know, the gesture of a figure is is complex. You can just sense it. You get a feeling for it. And as you work along, you keep checking to see if it's getting closer to that, right? You keep reviewing it. You keep looking back. And at those moments, you can toss your eye back and forth for a second to see if those ideas are maintaining. And so that, as Meldrum says, you could just simply transfer the thing. And it would, be, it would, it would work, right? So it seems an impossible task. How do you learn to eyeball angles and get them always correct? So there is your entire point, right? You don't get you get a sense of them, and then you do trial and error. Uh, David, <laughs> uh, two videos ago. Uh, okay, now here's Ang talking to you, uh, and this is me pushing the idea of the concept. Unless you have a concept of the thing fixed in your mind and eye, you'll just be pushing shapes around all day long. I couldn't find this, um, this exact quote, but it's really close, so I didn't bother not having the quotations in there. You could call it a loose translation. I'm going to give you another translation in a second from a different uh, different sources. Say the same thing, but they one one phrases it differently from the other. In fact, one of them phrases it differently twice from himself. He has two different phrasings of it, and then the second guy has a third one. Okay, so unless you have a concept of the thing fixed in your mind and eye, so you have to. What I tried to do is get a concept of that angle to vertical. Then I tried to imagine it onto the canvas. So that would be fixed in your mind. Um, a sense of it there, but the angle, the vertical is what gives you that confidence that that's probably going to be just like that. And try to pre-picture it. Um, and, that, and he says you'll be pushing shapes around all day long, but you can say that about anything. If you don't preconceive it, you'll be, you'll be pushing colors around all day long, you'll be, pushing, um, you'll be pushing angles around all day long, you'll be pushing proportions around all day long. Get a concept of the thing and know which part of the thing we're talking about. It's not the thing meaning an object. It's the thing you're working on. And we only work on, if you name the pigs right, right? We only work on the, on the color, on the value, on the proportion, all those things we can name, right? Those are the pigs you're working with. So that's all we care about. We're not looking at getting a concept of a dog, of dogs, any of that stuff. <laughs> all we're working with, as far as dog goes, is shapes and values, and it's all the same, right? And it stays, it's, the vocabulary is a very limited one which is one of the reasons you can achieve success. Everyone can achieve success with it. Now here's Ang again, a bigger, longer one. You see in the model the relationships of the big thing. So the model is just anything you're looking at in nature, this, this scenario over here. You see in the model the relationships of the big things. Isn't that nice to hear him say that right from the beginning? The relationships of the big things. Now he isn't talking about the things meaning arms and legs. He's talking about whatever big things like anybody to be successful has to be talking about them. It could just be the big shapes. Shape is one of those things, right? That's where the, all the character is. Be keenly struck with it, and keenly, too, render those big things relative. So he's telling you to work on big things, but he's telling you to be keenly struck with it. So you look at it, 
until your imagination kicks in. You, be, you, you believe, you, you, you have a sense of it, right? Keenly struck with it. It impressed you, okay? And then render these big things relative. All these things, all what you really are doing is rendering these things in relation to other things. Uh, now, even if he meant something else, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say to you, you can look anytime you want to see if the arms and legs are looking right, but you're never gonna correct them by the arms and legs. You're gonna correct them by a, an angle here or a value there or a proportion somewhere else, you follow? So if instead of following this method, you grope, if you search on paper, you'll have nothing that's valid, nothing of value. Uh, this is actually from a rough draft, by the way, so that's why that's got both of those there. Have in your eyes your spirit as a whole, all as a whole, the figure that you wish to represent. That's my uh, extra eye there. And may the execution be only the accomplishment of this, already possessed and preconceived. I'm not going to preconceive before you got into the room. You see it in your model. You see the relationships of the big things. And then you have to do this process called preconceiving, get an idea of it. It's all sitting there in front of you. As I say to the students, you have the crib sheet. You just have to preconceive it. You have to get it. You have to sit there. And this is where the Paxton look at it four times for every time you make a mark. Look at it four times because it's going to, it's going to take you four times. <laughs> Certainly the first time you start doing this. It's going to take you four times to just get a decent kind of an idea so you'll know whether you're getting closer when you make your marks. Okay. All right, so let's look at some pictures. And I'll just talk about some of those things you're preconceiving. In the, um, in the classic thing, um, you have, you're looking at the lightest light area, lightest light, and the darkest dark, and you're getting an idea of what those are. Now, you could say you're stuck with those, so this might be presetting. You're saying, I'm going to hit this note up here, or this plus this, I'm going to hit these notes just to see what I, how light I can make this area, because I want it to glow. It really is a bright light. And, I, and I'm going to put black down here, but then I see it's a colored black, so I say, no, it's got more color than that. And I'll look at those two, and then from that point on, everything you're preconceiving is in relation to those two things, right? And that's also true of, say, top and bottom. If you decided the top of your head was going to be exactly here, and the fiddle was going to be the thing, or maybe the bottom of a chair, or maybe this even, it's going to be the low point that you know for sure. From that point on, every single location that you're preconceiving is going to be related to those two points, right? So you, the tip of the finger is a relationship from here to here to here, minimally, right? It's easily that. And you can say, is this one third? Now, I don't, you would, here again, those aren't the words you want to use. Don't be naming one third. Uh, if it doesn't visually show you, it doesn't feel. So you can say, oh yeah, about a third. And then you can say, no, I mean, let me just learn to see how that feels to the other, right? One of the nice things about linear perspective is it has a length here that you can relate to a length here. So a short to a long length. And then you can relate the short length to the whole and the longer length to the whole. And those are three different things you want to preconceive, right? Now, when you, when you start talking about light effects, you have to, you, you're going to be talking about what this does to this, right? This dark meets this light with this edge. And it has an effect. And if you're talking about the order of the light effects, your job at the beginning of this thing is going to be to establish your the most powerful light effect. If it's this, you establish it here. Whatever it is, your job is to set that up and everybody else becomes a subsidiary of it, right? Now, so you could say, well, this area down here is really just completely lost. That's a nice thing to know because now we know we can go from this zero to 100 or whatever this thing is where you, did, you decided your chief effect is. Or maybe it's back here. Whatever, wherever it is, your job is is to preconceive those, get an idea of those fixed in your mind. I find it easier actually to get an idea of three things than an idea of two. But just having two, if this is a fixed thing, just have an idea of what this does effectually, right? This is that how far, how much it projects toward your eye. Every time you have a contrast of light hitting a dark, there's a certain projection to your eye. You can easily see this one is flying to your eye and that one's back quite a bit. This area projects less. So those are things you're preconceiving, that sense of the projection of things. So, and that would be true, say, of edges themselves. So if, this, if we believe that this is the sharpest edge in the picture, every single edge throughout this whole picture is going to be related to it. And that's all we're preconceiving. That's all we're getting fixed in our mind and eye. Uh, some of you have, you know, there's, argue, it's argued that there are masses of different, of men and women have, have different masses dedicated to the spatial, greater, uh, uh, for one than the other, both the spatial and color are very different for men and women on average. Doesn't mean men or women, whichever it is, can't uh, have 
you know, similar amounts to men or women, women or men in the in, but in any given situation. But if you know that, you you probably could use that area. For example, if you're really good at getting color relations, you can use that area of your ability of your of your um, uh, that you find easy as as a takeoff point to understand the other one. So if you're not great spatially, but you understand how to conceive the color relations, well, there we are. You can do this, right? <laughs> Uh, so, in the, but back to that idea of in the world of color. So if you see there's a red here and you say, and I tell students, as you know, that the default, you know, the reflex, if I ask you what color that is, is to look around the room. And then when you see this, it gives you some idea what color that is. When you see this, uh, these other reds, you get a better idea what this is, you know. And so these colors are all informing the other. But what you're trying to get in the end of the day is the relationship of this to this, shall we say, to this, as say three reds. Your job is to get them right to, in chromatically to each other, and to get them right, as you say, they're all a certain version of red. You want to know which one is the most red, more yellow, more blue, which is the most chromatic, and which is the lightest and darkest of that set. And those things are preconceived. You, pre, you, you look with your eyes to see that those things as a set, and you get an idea about them, fixing your mind and eye. Okay? I think I could go on and on with that, but I, I'm hoping you can get, get it from what I'm saying. This applies to shapes, to curves, to sizes. Um, the, um, there's so many sizes in here. We talk about the ovoid, right? So if you talked about nothing but this little passage back here, top of head, and this has the end, and this is the other end, you could treat this as an ovoid, right? Ovoid just means it's an irregular thing that you can just sort of throw a curvy line around. And this thing will have a certain width to a certain length. You have to preconceive that. You have to preconceive width to length of every possible unit. So anything that you could conceive, let's, we could do with this chair to the top of the violin, no particular reason, and then down, you cut off down here, say, and try to try to preconceive this. Or if you want to conceive it, you find it better to go all the way out to here. Preconceive this as a height to a width, uh, as a so as a total unit, right? As a as a three as a two D unit. Um, that's preconceived. Everything is preconceived. Okay. So, but then again, we get all the way back to the, your question, which is the angles question. So you're trying to figure out angles, and this angles, this thing right here, say from this knob down through here, suggests a very pretty, pretty a little bent, but a certain kind of an angle. From here to here to here, you can see an angle. Each of these angles has to, you have to have an idea of it in relation to vertical, and you're going to have to, if you're if you're not great spatially, you have to you have to sort out ways to do that. But it's all you have to do is make sure you can get have the one in your eye while you have the other one working, and then wait, 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 wait until you. You, and then I would suggest actually that when you think you own it, close your eye for a second. And then go try to make, if you have a sense of it, don't distrust your sense, go try to make it. And if you didn't get a good enough sense, you'll get it, you'll try it again. If you did get a good enough sense, go try to make it. But if you didn't spend enough time trying to make it until you said, now this matches that my sense of it, then you aren't giving yourself a chance. So you have to take time in both cases to first of all get an idea and make sure you register it. Coming to your consciousness in some way, still sensed. And then you have to go and paint it to you till it looks like what you remember, what you conceived. So it gives you the same sensation. And then you can go back and compare them side by side. And, you know, just flash back and look at them side by side and see if they seem interchangeable in the field, right? That grand unity of where all these things will hang together. Uh, now, but that don't leave it at that because the second thing you're going to be doing is angle to angle in the picture, right? So if you can see this angle, say, to some portion of her head, and then you can see this angle, well, these angles have to feel right to each other. You don't have to say 35 or 40 degrees or 40. You don't have to say anything like that or 80 degrees in this case. You just simply have to see them to each other. So there's an angle here, a very definitive angle. You can see that what it's doing to another one. It's often easier to see them when they're long, continuous, linear things or when they're long things that pick up again somewhere else. You know, you can see those. But the point one is more difficult. It's still just as, it's not that hard once you get the hang of it. I say point angles, that just means you have a point, what well, I was just showing you, you have a point here and a point here and then some other point somewhere that seems to make a long continuous line, wherever that is. Um, and you should do that over and over. There's a piece here. I'm saying these, just like I was saying, these ovoids are everywhere. Angles are everywhere. And if you're drawing a true likeness, then, then you wouldn't have any hesitation to check out every one of your angles. Every one of them to vertical, every one to the other angles in the picture. But you have to get an idea of the angle first. When you think you got something in your mind, close your eyes, and if you can, you know, in a sense, hold it there for a second, just feel comfortable that you do have an idea. It's a funny thing, an idea, but 
You'll have to work with that, okay? It's a, it's a bit of a mystery, right? And then, and then what you're gonna have to do is go to the canvas in the place that's supposed to be located and set that angle in place. By the way, that just sets me up to, and by the way, and then debrief, then check it out, and then go back to side by sides. Check it out to see if you said what you meant to say first. You see this? One, two, three, this pure method, right? The other thing I didn't talk about actually was points. And uh, for example, if you're talking about uh, just locate, the location of this person in the rectangle, and you see that this spot here is just right of center, and you, you know, as you get a concept of how that feels, and then make sure one of the things you do is you set that there and it's never gonna change if you're setting up the composition. So even the composition, as I said, the exits here, the distance from the top, and maybe something like this, some one place this way, they're gonna be fixed. Not everything is gonna be fixed. Everything else is gonna get coordinated around these things. And of course, that's what the anchoring thing was we did a couple of weeks ago. All right, I think I can, I think I can leave it at that. Um, let me look, oh, I did have a different one here. Yeah, so in every case, we're talking about the same thing. I think you probably have it in that one. I wasn't sure that would be enough, but in every case, so here you have a blue and you have grays that are in the family of blue and you have blues up here and your job is to see this blue with these blues and get a concept of what they're doing together. Now, and that's true. I'm just, I can say the same things I just said a minute ago. It's going to go over and over again. I could talk about big sweeping curves and how they feel to other curves. They, they, one of the things I've learned to do is to watch a curve like that just as a curve and then wait and let the other curves engage. And all of a sudden you have curve talking to curve, talking to any old curve you want. Some of them will just speak up right away. I don't chase lots of them, I chase a few. Um, but you can see that those kinds of things have to be preconceived, how this feels to that. And then you have to work on them until you begin to get that sense. You have to do enough drawing and enough truth of look of nature for them to produce that. We don't just throw a bunch of curve lines out there to, to do that, you have to get it with the data on it. So I'm saying much of the same things, just extending it. Uh, those, these two paintings, by the way, I should say are both by Joseph de Camp, um, who is as schooled as anybody in what we're talking about. Boston School, um, Boston School um, uh, way of thinking, strong in him as well as Benson and Tarbell, and way of approaching stuff. But all relational, all the time, seeing is seeing relationally, and Ang says, if you don't get a concept of the thing fixed in your mind and eye, concepts of the relationships <laughs> fixed in your mind and eye, you'll be pushing shapes around all day long. Or in any case, proportions, in any case, you know. You don't just guess and do stuff and if it doesn't look bad. You gotta you got do intelligence. You have to say this to this, I have the idea, now I do it. This to this is doing the same thing verifi verifiably. And then I glance back and forth and see if the thing's hanging together. So the thing's all of a piece. Maintaining that idea from the very beginning of what the big story is, right? Always try to maintain that no matter what you do, watch for that to be showing up no matter what little thing like this that you might be doing. Okay, I'm out of here. I'll see you in the next one. Have a wonderful week.